Good morning again. Welcome to the 37th uh, Church at Home. Uh, this is the beginning of Advent, even though it's uh, still November. Uh, we're not particularly people who uh, who do things like this, but I, I, I feel uh, this year, uh, as much light as possible, we need as much light as we can get. So I'm going to ask uh, Noah to come down and, and light. We'll light a, a candle every Sunday in Advent. Uh, so if Noah can do that, that would be good without setting the place on fire. It's all right. It's fine, Noah. It's fine. <laughs> Always nervous around flames. Welcome again, and uh, we'll, we'll begin with, I'll, I'll pray, and then we'll worship. We've, I've got a lot, uh, I think, to get through this morning, so we'll, we'll try and, and keep the pace up this morning. So welcome, if you're here with us, the usual, give us a shout, and we'll mention you later on. Uh, you can make comments through the through the service. Encourage you to do that and to engage with us. Um, Father, we thank you this morning again that we can gather like this, that we can be together, Lord. Thank you for this season of of Advent as we as we we look towards Christmas, whether or not we uh, we can or will gather at. Uh, at Christmas, it doesn't change the fact that there is real hope, there is real joy, there's real peace, there's real love in this season. Uh, and we look towards Christmas, even this year, with great expectation as we wait and look to you, Lord. Father, this morning, will you come and move amongst us as we uh, join together at home? Come and move in our midst, Lord. Come and fill the places where we are. We long for your presence. This whole season is, is about Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. And yes. you say that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us, and you're incapable of lying to us, Lord. That is the truth, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So be with us this morning, Lord, as we come and give you our praise and our worship today in Jesus' name. Burden gladly. 
holy bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. To him who sits on heaven's mercy seat, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing. Praise to the King of Kings, cause you are my everything, and I will adore you. Re- 
praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Ah. Uh-huh. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Exalted Lord, be high and lifted up, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are the light of the world. You are our hope as we look at the whole idea of, of hope and the hope that you brought, the hope that you are. Lord, you bring hope into our lives. You are the hope of the world, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would restore hope in anybody who's listening to this who's lost their hope, Lord. All through a service of worship this morning, Lord, I pray that you would touch people and restore their hope, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You have the list there, Caleb, and we'll say hello to everybody. It's weird, but every, every week I kind of I kind of wait for the week where there's like three names on it, um, and still still amazed every week at the number of of people who 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 tune into this. It really I say this every week. You must be bored hearing me, but it's it's such an honour that you take the time to join us. Um, it really is a privilege to be. Uh, with you. I just wish I could see you all um, soon, soon, soon and very soon. So hello, good morning to Nikki. Uh, hi to, have you taken the reverb off Caleb? Good morning to Dick and uh, Nancy. Uh, Elizabeth is tuned in this morning. It's always good to know uh, that my wife's uh, watching me. Uh, hi to Jason and Pauline, great to have you with us, uh, Claire and Craig, Jim and Audrey, uh, John and Elaine, uh, Katka and maybe some of the family, depends on uh, whether or not they're at work or doing something else. Good morning to James, good morning to Peter and Sue my right-hand man on these Sunday mornings, I really, uh, it would be a struggle. The service wouldn't be what it is without Peter engaging with everybody the way that he does. Uh, really thankful for him. And for Sue, Donald and Wendy, uh, good morning to you both. It was Donald's birthday this week, uh, and unfortunately he spent it in hospital He's home now, but keep, uh, please keep Donald in your prayers. Uh, he's, he's on the mend, but uh, he still needs us to keep him in prayer. Uh, good morning to uh, Andrew and possibly Denise and the family. Good morning to Ron. Hi to Wendy. Maggie, great to have you with us again joins us uh, most weeks. Good morning to um, Malcolm. No, I don't think it's Malcolm. Malcolm. Because, no, because it's Malcolm Dutch. That's a uh, Morris, I think. Might be Malcolm. We have a Malcolm and a Morris. So good morning to both of you. Uh, good morning to Anita. Good morning to Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Good morning to Eleanor. All the way from hi, Baton Rouge. Good morning to you, Eleanor. Great to have you with us. A, 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 a prophet, a, a woman who is an incredible prophet. 
Eleanor, uh, we had her with us, oh, probably November maybe last year, something like that. Uh, I have I've seldom heard such precise prophetic words uh, being given a real woman of God. So good morning to you, Eleanor. Privileged to have you with us. You must be watching this in the middle of the night. Uh, good morning to Anne-Marie. Hi, Anne-Marie. Good morning to Marion. Great to have you all with us. Linda and David, great to have you with us. Uh, Margaret, Evelyn, lovely to have you with us. Evelyn, Elaine, uh, Elaine and Ron. Uh, Derek, lovely to have you with us, Derek. You can always tell, I think, when the weather gets colder because Derek doesn't go hill walking so much. Uh, he, 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 post some amazing pictures of his hill walks. Uh, some of them are more than hill walks, more like mountain climbing. But uh, good morning to you, Derek. I'm going on too long here. Good morning to Ron. Lovely to have you with us. Lucy, lovely to have you with us again. Joy and possibly Clarissa. Lorna, lovely to have you with us. Lorna, Alex and Carolyn. Uh, Stephen and possibly Elizabeth, Jenny, uh, Miriam and Mike, Rose, great to have you here, Rose, Sandra, lovely to have you here, uh, Dale, Jan, uh, Chris, and somebody joining us, I think, for the first time this morning, Chris, lovely to see you. Uh, and Stuart and Patricia, lovely to see you all this morning. And again, thank you very much for joining us. I, every so often I think maybe I should stop saying hello to everybody, but I really feel it's important that, that all of you get to see and hear just how many folk are gathering together in this. We're not in this on our own. Uh, and it certainly does my heart good to say hello and welcome and thank you to all of these people and to the people under the radar, uh, Ray, who, who listens into us uh, every week. We've got folk all around the place who, uh, who ch tune in and we don't even see that they're here, but they send me messages of encouragement. Uh, Ina. Uh, another lady, part of this, this church who joins us faithfully. Uh, so good morning to, to all of you. Announcements this week. I'm going to go on and on and on with the announcements uh, because I have quite a lot to say. Some exciting stuff happening. Caleb, can you put up the screen with the Christmas box thing on it? It's scene 2-2. Two, two. Is it up? Yes. Good. So, uh, this is uh, quite an exciting venture that's happening on Sunday the 13th of uh, December. Uh, a thing called Christmas Box, it's particularly aimed at people in Perth, and you'll hear why in a moment. Uh, Basically, what 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 will happen is on the on Sunday the thirteenth, I think it's at six p.m. There will be a, we we will have it on our a, YouTube page, and it will be a, a, a like a presentation, I suppose. Uh, it will be very very well done. Uh, knowing who's behind it, it's going to be very very well done. Uh, but one of the things is you get a, a, a box, you get a Christmas box with various things in it. Uh, it has a pop-up nativity card. The whole thing's interactive. It's very clever. So as, 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 as it unravels, unveils itself, uh, as you watch it on YouTube, 
uh, you open your box and there's various things, a pop-up nativity card, there's a, a candle to light, there's chocolates for you, there's a mince pie, there's Christmas cake, and there's shortbread. Uh, and there's a presentation from various people, there's songs, there'll be carols, uh, and there'll be the person who's going to speak at it, I believe, is uh, Des Johnson, who heads up Alpha in, uh, in Scotland. And the, the, one of the things that I, I, I like about it is that it's, it, it's evangelistic. As it's not just for church people. It's evangelistic. And in January, there'll be an invitation in the box to join an alpha beginning in January. There'll be, a, there'll be like a generic alpha that you can join or individual churches. Uh, we certainly hope to put on an alpha so you'll be able to invite people and come along yourselves. I would encourage you if you've been a Christian, if you're not yet a Christian or you've been a Christian for 40 years, uh, you go on an alpha course and I'll guarantee you that you'll get a lot out of it and you'll learn a lot while you're there. So, here's what you need to do. Uh, I, in faith, I've ordered 50 boxes. But as I say, I don't just want you to have one for yourself. I would like you to take one and maybe give one to a neighbor or some a friend, an enemy, whoever you want. Now we have to, You have to listen to me because there's only one way of doing this. If you email me with your name and the number of boxes uh, to the church email address. If you don't have it, you can simply get it uh, by going on to the church web page. There's an email address there, info at perthelam.org.uk. Uh, email me with your name, the number of boxes that you want, and then you have to commit to picking up your box or your boxes on Saturday the 12th of December, and delivering it to whoever it's going to the same day because the presentation is the following day. So I'll remind you again next week, unless all the boxes are gone by then, as soon as the 50 boxes are gone, the 50 boxes are gone. So email me quickly on that one if uh, you want a uh, to be involved in that. It's a great, really as a great opportunity. I mean, who, d who doesn't want a box with all that stuff in it, even for the chocolates, the mince pie, shortbread? Might be the only Christmas card you get this year, who knows? Uh, so, simple, email me if you want one of these boxes. The next uh, announcement, I've, I've waited it must be coming up to nine months to to say this. We we did um, a, pa a kind of pilot uh, or a couple of weeks ago to see how a service went with some people and very limited number of people here. I had James and uh, Sarah here on uh, Remembrance Sunday. I've had uh, Mike and Miriam here uh, helping. Mike helps technically, which is great, but provided things don't deteriorate in Scotland, provided we don't go into deeper lockdown, or as long as things don't get worse, um, we're going to have church, gathered church, on Sunday the 13th of December and Sunday the 20th of December and we'll see how things go on an ongoing basis. So, again, listen carefully to me, because there's, again, there's only one way of doing this. Uh, email me if you would like to come. I don't know that we will get everybody in who wants to come, but over a course of a few weeks, uh, hopefully everybody who wants to be here we'll manage to get in. We may do two services. I don't really know. A lot of it depends on how many of you actually tell me you want to come. Um, so email me 
if you would like to come, you have to email me with your contact number and the number of people who you are be bringing with you. So if it's four, tell me there'll be four of you. I only need one contact number. And then I will email you back to confirm that you have a slot. It's, uh, it's the only way that we can do this at the moment. We can't yet say, just come if you want to come. We need to know who's coming and we need to make sure that we can fit you all in. I don't want you arriving at the door to be told, uh, I'm sorry, there's no room, no room at the inn. So if, as I say, if you can't get here the first week, we'll do, we'll prioritize you to be here the second week. But you have to email me with the contact details and how many of you are, how many folk you're bringing. Now, it won't be as usual it won't be church as usual, but it will, it will be church. It will be an opportunity to gather together, uh, even seeing people uh, for a lot of us is, uh, is a novelty at the moment. Um, it will still be live streamed on both the 13th and the 20th. Uh, the 20th is likely to be something of a carol service. Uh, but we'll, we'll still try and gather together. Uh, so I think that's all that I have to say on that. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say at the moment, please, if you, if you are coming, please be prepared for it not to be as usual. There's social distancing, sanitize your hands when you come in, uh, wear a mask, uh, you, you, you can actually sing, but only at a volume that you would be speaking at um, with your mask on, obviously. So that's uh, really exciting. I'm sure on the 13th, I'm sure it will be an emotional day. I'm sure emotionals will, emotions will run high that day. So that is us. Uh, Email me, please, if you want to come either the 13th or the 20th. Let me know your availability, and we will, I hope, manage to get folk in. Again, no prayer meeting on Tuesday at lunchtime. Wednesday this week, we will uh, have our Zoom prayer meeting. Sorry I had to cancel this week, but my home internet... Uh, wasn't uh, wasn't working, and I think those are all the announcements. Interminable time for uh, f for the announcements, but it's very important, and I hope encouraging that that we can even contemplate uh, getting together again. This morning, as I say, this is the first Sunday in Advent, uh, and and uh, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not a particularly, uh, I'm not one for all the rigmaroles of, of the various uh, festivals and things that we have in the church. But I, I began to look into Advent, uh, and 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 thought, yeah, we. we why do we not celebrate Advent more? Why do we not get more involved? So the next four weeks we'll be doing, we'll, 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 we'll highlight the fact that it's Advent and we'll look at Advent. You know, f I think five weeks and it'll all be over. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at going into 2021 but five weeks and, and, and Christmas will be gone. For some, <laughs> for some people, that brings a, a, a note of excitement. Uh, and for others, <laughs> it brings anxiety and stress, uh, maybe even more so. This year, reg regardless of the emotions stirred up, and as I hope that the next few weeks gives you the opportunity to... to reflect on a question. What, 
what is it all about? What is Christmas all about? What is Advent all about? As I said, I never knew that Advent had four themes, four messages, hope, peace, joy, and love. And over the years, I've probably spoken on each one of them uh, at different times and this season. Advent is a season of waiting. It's a season of promise. It's a season of good news. Uh, it's a season of hope. This week, that's what I want to look at. I want to focus in on hope today. There's several characters around the Christmas story who must have had great hope uh, about the season. Mary must have had great hope. I've written loads of stuff about her, the hope that Mary would have had, but I just don't have time this morning to go there because there's a, there's a specific Hey, a specific thing that I want to look at this morning. I'll probably come back and speak about Mary and Joseph hey, in, in, in the next three weeks. Mary's greatest hope, I think, was the fact that she knew when the angel came and told her that she was going to be pregnant, she knew from what the angel said that she was going to carry and birth the Messiah. And that has to be the greatest hope that she had. She knew the promise that had been passed down from generation to generation. And really, to be told that of all the women who have ever lived, that she was going to be the one to birth the Messiah. I, I, I can't imagine uh, the privilege and honor that she must have felt and the hope that she was going to bring this baby into the world. There's also the wise men. They must have had an incredible hope that they had got it right. They traveled for up to two years to go to where the star guided them. And I imagine they lived that two years in hope. I imagine probably at times they thought, let's sack this and just go home. Is this ever going to end? Because they didn't know where they were going. They just followed the star with hope that they were doing the right thing. But my main focus this morning is on two amazing people who you might not you might not even think about them being involved in the Christmas story because they don't appear until a few weeks after uh, Jesus' birth. Uh, two people who lived their lives in hope. If you have a Bible, look at uh, the book of Luke, chapter 2. That might be a surprise because chapter 1 is all about Jesus' birth. But Luke, chapter 2, reading from verse 22, it says this, When the time came for the purification rites required, by the law of Moses. Joseph and Mary took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is what it said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was <coughs> a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed, blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to, destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against and that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was very old. She had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. I've spoken at Christmas about Simeon and Anna before. They have a really, really unique and interesting place in the story of Christmas. So here we are, 40 days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph were required to go to the temple. This was a twofold act. It was a dedication and a consecration of their first son. And it was also a sacrifice, a ceremonial cleansing after a woman had given birth, 40 days after the birth. Le Leviticus 12 gives you the requirements. Read it for yourself, and you'll see all the detail. You'll see all the interest and stuff, some of which I'll quickly pull up this morning. But remember, this is only 40 days after Jesus was born. He's a tiny baby. This is very much part of the Christmas story and puts some things into context, I think, and we see these two people who have lived most of their lives, if not all of their lives, with this great hope that, the, that they would see the Messiah. Simeon had been told by the Holy Spirit, you, you, you won't die until you've seen the Messiah. Anna had spent all her life uh, in the temple, m much of her life in the temple, praising worshipping, fasting, waiting in hope for the Messiah to come. Now, one of the amazing things in Leviticus 12 is verse 8, and it says, it says this, if you go back, if you look at Leviticus, it says this, but if she cannot, if she cannot afford a lamb, because the, the lamb was the sacrifice that was supposed to be offered for the, the cleansing, the purification of the woman. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And this way the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean couple of things. This confirms that Mary and Joseph were poor. Some people say they weren't as poor as, uh, as they're made out to be. They were poor because they couldn't afford a lamb for the sacrifice. They could only afford the poor person's sacrifice to birds. 
by bringing two birds. That's, that in itself is proof that they couldn't afford the lamb. However, watch this, because they brought the lamb, the lamb of God, and by consecrating him into God's service, that in itself was an act of sacrifice. They returned him to God who had provided him in the first place. They thought that they couldn't afford a lamb, but they didn't realize that God had given them the lamb. They didn't realize that they had a lamb. And I reckon that if they had just gone with Jesus, they wouldn't have needed the two birds in God's sight, in man's sight, and the, the temple authority's sight, they had to provide the sacrifice. But in God's sight, I believe they sacrificed Jesus the Lamb when they dedicated him back to God. It's a reminder that the Lamb of God was given for us. What an incredible hope we have in that Jesus still takes away, as he took away then, the sins of the world. That's the most valuable thing that was ever given to anybody. The greatest hope is that he came down at Christmas. There is no greater hope than Jesus being amongst us. Anna and Simeon had both waited for the Messiah to come. They both had a hope. They lived in hope that the Messiah would come. It seems for both of them that they had been a long time waiting. They both actually kind of hoped for something different. Simeon, we're told in verse 25 of Luke chapter 2, was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting for solace supplication. He hoped to be comforted. He saw what he hoped for in Jesus. In verse 38, we're told that Anna was waiting for the, for the redemption of Jerusalem. She hoped for liberation, deliverance, forgiveness. Anna was by the Bible's definition in Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Very old. Despite her 84 years, which was an incredible lifespan 2,000 years ago. Still a good innings today, but an incredible lifespan 2,000 years ago. But despite being 84, she didn't mope around in the departure lounge waiting to die. She lived in the temple, a life of worship, a, a, a life consumed by hope that there was more, that there was better things to come. Night and day, we're told, she worshipped, fasted, prayed, and again, while she waited in hope, she lived in the, in, in the presence of God. As she waited for the Messiah, she lived in the presence of God. One thing I love about Anna, and every time that I speak about her, I, I, I bring this out. I love this fact. I still find it so significant in, in the whole Christmas story. Verse 36 tells us that she was a prophet. It says she was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. Now, why on earth, why on earth does it mention Phanuel? Even saying it sounds like you've got a speech impediment. But it's very clearly she was known as Anna, 
the daughter of Phanuel, when people spoke about her, they probably referred to her as Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. Do you know what Phanuel means? Face of God. So here, here was this woman, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, constantly referred to as that. Anna, daughter of the face of God, and she actually gets to look on the face of God. Her hope fulfilled. She got to see the incarnate face of Emmanuel, God with us. Possibly, as Simeon did, possibly, it doesn't say this, but possibly to hold him and to gaze into the face of her Messiah. Her hope. Folk, what, what, what are you hoping for this Christmas? To see the face of God? To experience that presence? Emmanuel, God with us, He's never left us. He's still with us. What are we hoping for this Christmas? God with us. God present with us. God's presence with us. Maybe few see it. Because maybe few actually hope for it and look for it. You know, I find it incredible that a nation that longed for the Messiah missed the Messiah. The only ones who are recorded as recognizing him, the only Jews who recognized Jesus, were Simeon and Anna. Because they lived in hope, Most who were there in the temple, I'm going to suggest to you, had lost their hope. They were so wrapped up in their religion that they had lost their hope. Many, I think, lost hope to, the, to religious practices. Why? Because they didn't hope and they didn't live for the presence Jesus was at the temple, the very center of Jewish tradition and religion and life and culture, their heritage. We're talking about priests, Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes, worshippers, ordinary people, and they missed it. They missed the fact that Jesus was in their midst. I'm going to say that they were hopeless. So we have these two quite incredible people who were old, prob probably sidelined. Nobody would have imagined that these two old dudes would be the very people who recognized Jesus. They've hoped for a long, long time. And I wondered, I wondered if they ever got fed up hoping. I don't know. Maybe they were so passionate that they lived every day absolutely on the edge. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's today. Every day I ask myself, is it today, Lord? I'm believing for a move of revival in this country. And every day... I ask God, is it today, Lord? I live in hope for that. Has Christmas become too predictable, too familiar for you? Have you heard the Christmas story so many times that it no longer makes you marvel? Mary and Joseph, when they were told, uh, when, when Simeon made the comments, they, it, it says that they marveled. And I'm sure 
I'm sure they had their own hopes, their own dreams. Does Christmas still astonish you? Does looking towards the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, being able to see the face of God, does it astonish you? Does it encourage you? Does it do anything to restore your hope? I hope it brings you hope. I hope this morning that in the midst of a, a, of a year that has been in many ways pretty hopeless for many people, I hope that looking towards the birth of Jesus, waiting, anticipating, fills you with hope. Father, this morning I pray for everybody who's listened. I pray, for, Father, for a, a, a restoration of our hope and the reality of the fact that Christ came down at Christmas. That has to bring us hope, Lord. Make us like Simeon and Anna, people of hope. The world right now needs hope, and if we can demonstrate it, then we're doing a good thing. So I pray, Father, that you would restore hope to anybody who's lost it. For people who are getting tired and weary, Lord, increase our hope. The greatest hope that there ever was, that there ever will be, is Jesus. Lord, give us hope. In his name we pray. And with that whole idea of hope, the greatest hope there ever was, as or will be, as the fact that Jesus died for you, for me, for everybody. And this morning, as we take communion together, we do it with hope. We do it with an assurance that where there wasn't a way, God made a way. Where we were alienated from God, Jesus connects us back to God. He makes us acceptable in God's sight. And this morning as we take bread and we take the cup, we do this in remembrance of you, Jesus, with, with, with great hope for the great hope that you are. your body that was broken for us. Thank you for your blood that was poured out for us. And as we take these, we remember you. Even at this season when we focus on your birth, we remember your death. And we give thanks. We praise you. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you again for being with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for allowing us into your home. Continue to pray, please, for uh, for Donald and for Sarah Stubbards. Keep Sarah Stubbards in your prayers as well. She goes back into hospital tomorrow. Keep her in, in your prayers, folks. Final thing, yeah. Um, can you put the, have you put the details up, Caleb? For uh, if, you, if you are able, if you are willing to uh, either do a bank transfer into the account number, which is here, that's the church bank account. Uh, if you feel led to give an offering, please. Uh, two ways of doing it at the moment, bank transfer, or you can post, or I suppose three ways at the moment, you can post uh, a cheque to the church address, or third way it would be if you, if you want to put uh, cash in an envelope through the door. Uh, I'm here every day, so it's not even going to lie behind the letterbox for long. Again, thank you. Really thank you to everybody who has been so faithful in uh, your giving. Uh, so yeah, if you would like to make an offer, and these are the ways of doing it at the moment. So again, thank you very much for being with us today. Have a great week this week, and I hope that this week you see something to hope in. I hope this week that God shows himself still to be the God of hope in this season of hope. So thank you very much. Have a good week and God bless you.